All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week of OS Dev Gardening, where I embarrass myself live on the internet as I attempt to work on an OS. Um, yeah, this is going to be a good week. This is week 11. And last week, we got into some really good momentum, I thought. Um, I got tired of working on the build system. And so I started working, I just, I just found, I, I started going into the C code just to find literally anything to work on basically. And I kind of started doing that by just approaching it from an understanding point of view. I, I don't have enough understanding of the system yet. So I have all these things that I um, want to understand better. And um, virtual memory is a big one. And I think I was I was just kind of um, like browsing around a little bit and ended up finding some so a nice little easy task with all this assert stuff with this assert macro. Um, and I think I want to continue along a similar vein today. I don't really feel motivated to go back to any build system stuff. I was having too much fun last time with all this little C stuff, and I noticed a bunch of other stuff we could do. <clears throat> We could um, work a bit more on our include hygiene, which is always a fun and nice little thing to do. And I also have this like slightly more interesting story of making panics appear in the UART um, because they only appear in the actual like VGA kind of console. And I just think it'd be cool to see if I can make it appear in the UART too. Um, so let's just take a quick look back. I'm gonna get all my Git clients and everything set up. Um, let me get my my fork set up. Yeah. Um, clear filter. Not, or no, offline mark. Filter. So just for a check, and here's where we are. Um, I was. I'm glad that I could actually finally. Um, merge a branch for the first like for the basically the first time ever in the history of the project um and the branch is just doing all this porting all this if panic code to like a garden assert is what i decided to name it um and i'm pretty sure i did that right um i hope i hope i did that right but i did that and i ported basically almost like the whole code base to this and also in the process i did some cleanups um, with the headers, moving console. That's the prototypes to console that H. Um, so I think I will just continue with this kind of stuff. Let's just let's just um, let's, let's start off as usual with just making sure things build and run. It's always a good start. I'm pretty sure things should definitely be building and running. Good. Uh, yeah, so here we are. Um, yeah, so this window is the Kimu con like VGA kind of console, and then this one over in my terminal is actually the UART connection, I believe. And I think, and somehow they are like kind of replicated, so that if you do things over, actually, wait a second, I don't, I'm not actually sure how that works necessarily. There's some kind of replication, but there's also some differences, like panics only appear in this like console window but not in the terminal so i don't i don't really know what i'm talking about with that um but yeah that's um that's just kind of like the current state of the art of stuff and let's just get into it so kind of just going back here um i have way too many files open so i'm just going to kind of close some stuff what's uh Save? Okay, why is stuff different? Did something change or why? Okay, I don't know why that file was unsaved. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna close some files. <clears throat> and this is just bugging me, this whole defs.h thing. <laughs> This is just totally bugging me. Um, um, 
Hey, Glenford, nice to see you again. Um, no, no build system for today. I am so tired of working on the build system. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm actually trying to work more on real like C code today. Um, even if it's just little, like little small stuff, I don't really want to work on the build system. So I think my main target is this defs.h file, which is just really, it just stands out to me as something that's like pretty annoying and, and needs to um, like ought, ought to be fixed basically. Um, yeah, the problem is that it's not very hygienic and not, not idiomatic at all for a bunch of different .c files to all share like a single header file. And there's all these, um, all these reasons why you shouldn't do this. It's bad for your build. Basically it's bad for your build performance and bad for your, for your dependency management, um, which affects your build performance. Um, and it's just kind of like confusing also. So yeah, so I'm going to take a stab at fixing this. Let's just, um, let's just, let's just, uh, Let's start with bio.c, should be nice, nice and simple. So here's the, the concept is that, um, you know, I'm gonna open up console.h, which I think got a, that's so annoying Oh, that this other one appears. Okay, I added this last time. This is like a super simple header file, duplicate file, and I'm gonna call it bio.h. Get rid of all this. And now I'm going to copy all of these things into bio.h. Okay, and now we need our types file. I'm not totally sold on this whole types.h thing with the uint, but whatever. Um, for the moment, I'm just gonna deal with it. And Yeah, so now this means that anybody, okay, so first off, bio.c is going to include bio.h. Um, okay, secondly, anybody that included anything here is going to need, c to h, okay, main.c. Anybody that uses any of these, um, any of the things in bio.h is now going to uh, be improved. Bio.h, uh, yeah, I think I will also save this into a register. I wonder if I did that right. Um, yeah, I think I did. Okay. Include bio.h. Nice. Main.c is the only client of this one. What about b read? Or read. <laughs> um, who is using? Okay. So quite a lot of people are using b read. It's a very, it's kind of like a fundamental API for operating on the block device. So, um, bio.h, yep, and that looks right to me. fs.c, log.c. Okay, that seems to be it for that one. Um, brls. I'm not sure. I have like not no real clue what, what that uh, would mean. Okay, nice. In this case, it's only used by fs.c and log.c, which we already added the include to, so we don't have to do anything. Then b write. <clears throat> um, b write is only used by log.c. So that was pretty easy, actually. That was like quite straightforward, I believe. Um, one thing we could check is if, is this defs.h thing needed anymore? 
index.h. So what, I mean, that's actually a really annoying thing to um, check for. I would need to, like, in this biodc, I need to check if any of these things are um, used. File is never mentioned. Like, bio. I don't, actually, I don't even really know what bio stands for. Block IO I, I, is my guess. Okay, probably block IO. Um, and just based on intuition, it doesn't make sense for any of the file system. Like, it doesn't make for the sense for the block for the block um, subsystem to depend on the file system. It, like, that's like it, the opposite of what should happen. The file system depends on the block layer, which is a lower, lower layer. And the, and the block layer should not have any dependency on the file system, I, I believe. That's my, like, if I just quickly search for a couple of things, it would not make any sense for the, um, yeah, the block layer to depend on this stuff, IDE. Now it actually does make sense for the block layer to depend on the IDE. I don't actually really know what IDE is, but I believe it's um, it's the it's like actually low-level disk stuff. Simple. It's a driver. Um, simple PIO-based non-DMA IDE driver code. It might be worth it to just look look at. Um, what IDE even means. Um, yeah. So it's like, what is a Kimu IDE device, for example? Oh my gosh, I don't want to log in. Understanding. I'm not even sure if I'm. PIO. This is emulated devices, IDE. I search for IDE, okay. I'm just gonna keep some notes going on in the, this is getting kind of chaotic. Oof, okay, that's it. Okay, well, <laughs> uh-huh. So storage devices, Kimu, as of 2015, so this is really old. But um, this gives us some clue of what IDE even is. IDE disk, like integrated drive electronics. I mm, changed to English. What is IDE in disk? Okay, sheesh, sheesh, oh my gosh. Okay, is an interface standard introduced in 1986 is for connection of storage devices, such as hard disk drives and solid state drives and CD drives. Okay, this is just like a kind of standard for storage. Um, <clears throat> yeah, kind of a standard for storage. Um, maybe it's not so important to like really get into things, but um, so this is probably one of the devices the driver is driving. So yeah. Anyway, it makes sense that the block layer depends on um, something even lower level than that, which is actually the raw disk um, like interface, basically. So, so in other words, it makes sense. So in other words, devs.h is still needed. So, uh, okay, I make. That worked, okay, nice. 
And let's just check out what's going on. Don't want this. Okay. Quick peek. Bio let's see who's bio h. Bio that h. It's going to have some code movement from this into actually just real quick types.h. I believe I have the pragma ones. Yeah, I added that previously. I just because now we're including it from multiple places, and I just wanted to make sure. Um, yep, so fs.c now has this include. Let's see. Okay, I think we're good for a commit. But I should not um, I should not be on the master branch. I should make a branch called um, vector defs h. Okay, now we're ready for a commit. Um, move. Uh, what's the, what's the what's the message? It's like create bio.h and move um, prototypes there. That was easy. That was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a nice little easy win to start off with. Let's keep let's keep it moving. Exec dot c. So we're going to do ex the exact same thing. Um, duplicate uh, exec dot h, and now we're just going to take this and put it here. Could don't even need types dot h. Move this. Yeah, all these are uh, forward declarations, kind of interesting. Um, yeah, we will clean them up later. Um, so exact that h. Um, so now we need to find anybody that was ever using, oops, ever using exec, and make them rely but okay wait a sec what is wait what yeah what is exec.c okay this is obviously kernel code this is the implementation of the exec sys call probably um But I'm just getting a bit confused because it also seemed to be used by user space. So 20 second break. This is clearly in the kernel. It's relying on all this kernel stuff. So, but what is in it? The initial user. So this is. Okay, yeah, that's what that's. I think in user.h, there's also a thing called exec. Yeah, there's the there's the there's the there's the libc. So that's why um, this is kind of confusing. So we don't care about this. We don't care about this. All we care about is this right here. Uh, hmm. Exec.h. I think that's I think I think that's literally, literally it. There's only one place in the kernel. Is that right? What about yeah? What ha, what? So so sysexec yeah. So there's one. So sysexec is like really some kind of entry point 
uh, for the exec syscall, and then that forwards to this kind of implementation function um, called exec. Um, and I kind of want to rename this to like exec impl, for example, which is a pattern that I'm familiar with, but I'm not going to do that right now. But one just one like yeah, is there anything else? I mean, this is a pretty foolproof kind of thing. Exec C, exec H. And it does see that's that's user space. Um sh dot c that's user space. User space, user space. All right. Uh quick test to make sure we are building still. And we definitely are, so yeah. Um, create exec dot h. Yeah. Hmm. Commit message is what? Let's create exec dot h. Factor to exec. Oh. Great. Maybe refactor, yeah. Create exec.h. Whatever, I'll I'll do that later. Um I'll think about this later. So nice. Let's let's keep going. There's something like very nice and calming about this like work. It's just uh oh no. It's just it's just Nothing, this is not hard. It's just so easy. Um, there's no file that, is there a file that h? Hmm. Hmm. Wait a sec. Oh, uh, interesting. Was there already an exec.h? I mean, we just made that, okay. That was the one we just made. Now I'm like a little bit concerned because file to h. Why, um, interesting. If there's already a file to H, why are not, or why are these things not in it? Uh, hmm. What even is file to H? It's like, In memory copy of inode. Hmm. File, sleep lock. Uh, let's file that C. File. <clears throat> like it's all the file stuff. This one little comment. You can kind of tell that this is like a bit of like an old school code base cut because of like the naming. It's neither camel case nor snake case. It's just like you put all the words just together <laughs> and like hope that it's like kind of clear to read it's kind of interesting um so this is like this is like the file abstraction file descriptor abstraction mm -hmm. um so this is interesting that it has a header file, but then it also has these. And I guess there's some separation here between like an internal and an external API or header. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, Samir, what's up? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so. What should we do here? Um, so I have some options. Like I could just move all of these into file.h, but there is a reason I think these two things were separate. And one reason could be that, that something, like these are somehow internal, maybe. So the, so the thing to check is, are there any users of like these types outside of file.c? And the answer is like, is yes, definitely. <laughs> um, 
there's a lot of them. I mean, it's like a bunch of, so it's, this is like clearly a very public type. What about inode? Um, it's used by the FS. So it's used, yeah, it's used in a lot of places. So this file, even vm.c. So none of this is like very private. Um, all except for this. Um, hmm. Okay, that makes me all kind of wonder. File dot h. Dev sw, whatever that is, is does actually seem to be kind of like private. Um, so I wonder, mm, 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 mm. I wonder if it can be moved into the C file. I, that may be kind of a dumb question. I actually don't, um, immediately know the answer, but I think that I'm pretty sure that's possible. Um, why? Yeah. Oops. So, okay. So file that H file. Let's see. Dev SW. So we have some kind of like array. Um, yeah. Yo, so we are, um, working on defs.h and I'm cleaning it up because, um, it's not very hygienic to just have all these function prototypes in a single file for all these different translation units. Ideally, there should be a, a different header file for every single one of these. And that's what we're doing. Um, and we've made very good progress so far. Um, we've already cleaned up two of them, but now this is a bit trickier, like ever so slightly trickier. Dev SW, uh, struct dev SW. So what's this? So that's the struct and there's extern. This is kind of odd. Extern struct dev SW array, which is declared in a, um, a header. Um, hmm. I don't immediately know what's, I, I think like this seems like kind of odd to me. Yeah, like, yeah. I um, I got tired of working on the build system, so I'm just having, so now we're actually going into some more like real coding stuff. I think this is totally unnecessary. I don't, I have no real, I have no idea why this extern struct definition is even here. If there are no external, um, that's so confusing on this. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong, I'm maybe, okay, yeah. So this is actually, no, I'm wrong. So this is public and it's used by other clients that need to access this like global list of like, I don't know what it is, devices or something like that. For example, console.c and fs.c use this thing. So that actually makes sense. I see, okay, so this thing is public. So now this type needs to be public. Um, so it's, uh, yeah. So in summary, everything here is public. So there's no reason I can't move all these function definitions into this file also. It's all part of the public interface of the file, like dot, the file dot h subsystem or, or, or whatever, like the file descriptor subsystem. Um, and yeah, so like all of these things 
are currently, I guess, including two things, devs.h and file.h. And they don't really need to. Um, so I'll, yeah, so I think this is going to be this is going to be easy. So all this need all that needs to happen is um, yeah we we just need to have this struct definition like at, at the top. All these things are in terms oh file stat. Okay, that could be tricky, but let's just let's just uh let's just try it. Also, this console one thing I don't really know what it is, but um, so this goes. Oh, I see the struct stat. I was using a couple of different places, so that's why that's at least partially why there is this forward declaration of the struct stat thing. Um, question is, what should we do now? Stat. We could. I think. Um, I'm going to make a guess. I think this will not compile. Fs.h. Does this include stat? Nope. Okay, my guess, this is not gonna compile because struct stat is missing. There's no um, declaration of that type. Let's see if I'm correct. I'm correct, okay. Struct stat doesn't compile, it's not there. We need to add the forward declaration. Okay, I don't know what kind of spacing is good or whatever, but... Um, We'll add it at the top, yeah. And, oh. Okay, good. So, um, right, so that compi compilation error is now because I didn't actually finish this like port. Um, so now, as part of doing that, I need to go through every client as usual and see or every, every function and see who is using it. Type.c. So now um, it's going to be, wait a second, no, file.h. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so this is actually not that hard though. So I can probably maybe, I can maybe remove some defs calls, but um, all these clients should, like, probably already. Be including file.h because because they're already using struct file, right? So what is this issue? Main.c seems to be an exception to this rule. Um, and what's the what's the issue? File init. Yeah. So there's like this this one function file init, which seems to be kind of unique, and that was only in devs.h. Now uh, file the h. So run it again. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, there's other problems. File dupe. So that's interesting. What's going on here? Proc. Proc.c needed this. Um, but didn't. It didn't inherit. So what's it? So it somehow doesn't need any other um, type declaration. Um, yeah, I'm not being too careful with this whole def stat thing. Ideally, I would actually check if it's needed anymore, but that's a lot of work. And my plan is I'm just going to do that at the end. At the, at the very end of this process, devs.h is not going to have anything in it. And I can just remove it from every file that is including it because it's totally going to get removed at the end. So assist file also. So what's the deal here? This is already including file.h, so that's good. Word. All right. So that worked great. Let's, uh, Let's check out what's going. What we did. So we moved this into here. Added the type, the forward um, declaration. Added this thing. Added this thing, and now our thing works. So commit refactor. Create. Um, was it no? Or, or yeah. 
kind of a cleanup, I suppose, but mm. it's, yeah, it's not worth it. Move. Um, file prototype types into file.h. Mm -hmm. All of the types that set in file.h were all the types were public already anyway. Good. Good, good, good. Let's keep it moving. <clears throat> what are some, wait, well, maybe let's do the easy ones. Let's do all the easy ones first. Although there's actually kind of a lot of stuff here. It's kind of a lot of stuff. Um, but that's what gardening is. Yeah, let's just, let's just do, let's do IDE.C. So, um, that's a nice simple, yeah. Duplicate IDE. Dot, oh, is there already an IDE? .h? Nope, okay. Duplicate IDE dot H. This thing is in the way. And IDE struct buff, struct buff. So that's a forward declaration. And we can immediately just uh, check. Okay, it's, it's also used by this log thing, so we can't get rid of that. But we can um, get rid of this. Put that here. Oh, wait, I, I also realized I've been making a mistake. I've been forgetting my pragma once is in all these header files. Prag uh, once. Right, like types.h has it at the top. Yeah, so I should go back and fix that like immediately. Also, just file it. h have it? Yes, okay. So what did I just, I, was, I created bio.h and I didn't have it uh, once. And exec.h didn't have it. That, uh, that looks better. Yeah, I thought the header file was looking a bit weird and empty for some reason. Um, so bio.h gonna amend that into this commit. Exec.h gonna amend that into this commit. So now just slightly, yeah. Put that where it belongs, pragma once. Um, an IDE, and now we do the usual thing. Just the H. Um, I'm just gonna clean up. I have like a bit too much stuff open for my liking. Uh, and it does see if I'm H. Okay. Devs dot H. I'm just gonna. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So let's look. For this IDE init, who is doing this? All right, stretch time. Second break time. Yep, signature twenty second break. Um, IDE in it. So yes. Oops. IDE dot H. So that's one. Then mem IDE dot C. IDE dot H. Oh, uh, what? Okay, 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 this is interesting. So this actually, I think belongs, hmm. Okay, let me, let me see. So mem, mem IDE is that interesting thing that I think is like an alternative to regular IDE. And I think it in, implements basically the same interface. So actually, yeah, it needs a regular ID. Also, I just realized one thing that I made them moving a bit too fast. Um, so when we add these new header files, so the C file should always have the header file as the first one. Did I do this? 
over here. I think I forgot this. I think I, I think I totally forgot that. Let's uh, like dot c exact dot h, right? Um, like that h. Just for kind of good form. Yeah, I, I think that was something I, I missed. Um, hmm. Although I kind of did that in the middle of like all this other stuff that I'm doing, so that's a little bit... Um, I would like to try to build it just to make sure that change works, but um, I'm kind of in the middle of stuff. I'm not sure if I'm in a building state right now exactly. But all I did was add this one thing. So what I can do is I can do my nifty stashed un stash unstaged stuff. This is like annoying build legacy make file. I'm gonna I'm gonna just delete that whole thing. Um devs.h. So this is all that new stuff we were doing. So I'm gonna run my stash unstaged thing. So now we have basically only like only this change, and then we can quickly test. Does, uh, ign oops. Oh, wait, no, I actually made a mistake. Wait a sec, wow. About an H, I, mis I misspelled that. I didn't even notice. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to take this change, amend it into here, yeah. Good. Now it should build. No. Did, did I all wait? What the? Did I also misspell it here? It's so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um. So I also misspelled it. Also. So this thing, right? That's where I added. Yeah. I also needs to amend it, and amend it into that one. And. Um. Yeah, now it should build, right? Okay, good. And then now finally this thing can get amended into this thing too. So now this commit adds the header file, adds the include on the C file, moves the thing and it's perfect. And then now we can go and um, I want to like pop, pop my stash. Pop my stash, and now we're back where we were in the middle of this IDE thing we were doing. And we were looking at this uh, like interesting thing where mem IDE is just an alternate implementation of the IDE interface. So uh, before I forget, I'm just going to add this thing here. So they both include IDE.h at, at a top level. Also, Right off the bat, I'm going to need my struct buff forward declaration. That's it. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, so I, what was I doing? I was looking for callers of this. Um, right. So, so main.c is the only caller. We already did this. Mem IDE .c is not a caller. It's an it's just another like uh, def definition of this IDE init thing. Which reminds me that I that this whole time I have not been testing the um it was like this uh make what was it memfs? Kernel memfs. That's that's the thing that like uses the mem IDE. I hope this builds. It doesn't even build, but I think that's because of the current topic or the current thing I'm doing. So, so that's good. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like this: the mem IDE swaps in somehow. Yeah, IDE that it gets filtered out. IDE replaces it as the object file that's going to supply those uh, symbols. So. Yeah, so that's good, that's easy. Moving on, IDE inter, IDE interrupt maybe. Clients are gonna be just trap.c, which is gonna need 
um, IDE.h. Cool. And lastly, yeah, IDE as in the storage device interface. Uh, exactly. I actually don't know like almost anything about this, but we were looking at it earlier uh, in the stream. Um, yeah, yeah, storage device, something with hard disks, something like that. <laughs> uh, but I don't know anything about about it in any kind of detail. Um, IDE RW is used by bio.c. So this is going to need an IDE ide.h, right? Um, IDE, I mem IDE stress fs. This is just like comments though. Stress fs, interesting. So this is a user space program that does a bunch of disk stuff. Whatever. So yeah, let's see if it builds. Make kernel. Good, kernel memfs, good, okay. So kernel memfs is still working, even though I don't build it regularly. Um, if I had like a CI, it would, like, it would, you know, it would be nice to like uh, build these things and make sure I don't break the build, but, um, but I don't for the moment, so <laughs> I'm just running this manually. Um, also welcome to anybody new that's joining the stream thanks for coming so this is going this is going very well um what what does our git look like so we've ported a couple clients you know okay so we first off we've removed this there we added ide.h which does the move which does the movement of the functions function prototypes we've uh cleaned up every we've so we've added the h as a first thing as a first include for all of both IDE.c and mem IDE who are implementing this interface. And then lastly, updating all of the clients to now depend on this header file. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, commit. Um, create IDE.h. All right, speed running this. De so what's next? F.h fs that wait, uh, dot, dot c looks big, so I'm like skipping it in favor of these easier ones. Um, so I just did ide dot h. So I'm going to do a typical thing where I duplicate the file, and I don't know what the it's io apic. Interesting. I don't know what that is. Io apic. And we don't need this anymore. So now this is going to go here. And what do we need? External uchar. So we need to include types.h for the uchar. Right? Okay. Um, and we have just two functions ioapic enable, from, which are used from three places. So let's just do that. Oops, uh, IOA pick. What could IOA pick stand for? IO something programmable interrupt controller or something like that. So IDE.c A pick. Uh, hmm. And then lastly here. Interesting. Okay. Uh hmm. -huh. So does it compile? I think it should. Nope. Oh yeah, no, I forgot. I forgot also um, to do this here. Now it should compile. Kernel. But main dot c. Oh, did I forget main? Wait, what? Oh no, I, I didn't finish it yet. Okay, so. This is then the only client is main.c. So I'm going to add a, this work? Yeah. Make kernel good. F work. So again, defs.h, yep. IOAPIC.h, yep. 
how I picked up C, yep. Then these are just all the clients that are updating. So, yep. Uh, create create ioapic.h. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Getting pretty good at this. Okay, Alec. <clears throat> Um, yeah, duplicate kalloc.h. This sounds important. Uh, okay. No, no includes needed. Um, yeah, no includes needed or anything. But this might be kind of annoying because there's probably a lot of clients of, uh, it's annoying that all my CMake stuff is appearing there. Um, Okay. There's probably a lot of clients, but first off, come in here. Okay, kalloc.h, physical memory allocator. Um, by the way, do I only use light mode for this, for the stream only, or I use light mode during the day, dark mode at night. Yep, I think I have my system set to automatically change my theme. But um, I like I like light mode a lot, actually. Just it's, it's, uh, during the day, at least, like seems like e easy on the eyes. Um, so yeah, kalloc.h, right. So now, yeah, now we're going through here and we're updating everybody that uses k as a, as a user of kalloc.h. H, right, and I'll just do copy that into a register. Um, so that's main. Interesting. Pipe. Um, paste. Pipe. Proc. Paste. Uh -huh. That's a little bit annoying me that there's, there's no new line here. <laughs> I'll, that'll be like a little cleanup. I, so I'm just going to do that right now proc thing clean up yeah new line between proc.h header and the rest clean up okay um right k alloc pipe so pipe so proc got it um vm VM's gonna need it. And that's it. That's the last client of K Alec. K free. Um okay, this is it's a pipe proc VM. Same like same uh, C files we ju we just did this with. Main K init one intro I don't know what is K init one? Okay, knit one, knit two. So I think we should be build, be building right now. Uh, yep, we build. Good. So double check, um, move that, add this, add the include, clean up all the clients. Okay, uh, create kalloc.h. Um, KBD, what could this be? KBD interrupt, no idea. KB, K, KBD, right? Already exists. Keyboard, okay. <laughs> Keyboard stuff, interesting. So it seems like there was some convention in this code base of there were types and constants and data defined in headers, but the original authors chose to put the exported functions into a single header file with all the functions, which uh, I don't really think we need to do. I think we can just put everything granularly like where it uh it goes and so we have, if we already have so the question though is 
is this all, stuff all private? And actually the answer is actually yes, this stuff is super private. It's all it's all private constants um, of oops of kb uh, kbd dot whatever except or no okay that that's a weird grep okay shift so now that that makes me pause a little bit. Like all this stuff is only used in this translation unit. So these are kind of private types and private data. Um, yeah. Dark Zone, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hope you're having a nice day. Um, yeah, now this, so this is actually an interesting topic. Um, we have all, we have, we have kbd.c, which is like some keyboard. What's what's in kbd.c? Um, kbd.c has two things in it. And what about this? Is this private? It has one totally private thing. I think, so we should make this static then, of course. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Chill OS dev, meaning you are programming your own OS. Kind of, like a little bit, but not really. Um, I like I didn't start from scratch with this OS. I'm actually, I'm actually just like, working on, um, it's called XV6. It's like this thing from MIT. So if, if we look at the Git history, my stuff is is very new. There's like this whole history of the project going back like like really far into the past. I didn't I didn't I didn't like make the project. I'm just uh, I just downloaded it and I'm working on it. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, that was a, that was a little bit of like a side quest. The static thing, um, um, yeah. Am I forking it or working on main? So the project is inactive. Like it's a, it's a, it's kind of like a dead project. This is like an old OS for learning, basically for students at MIT. And I guess you could say I'm forking it. Like there's no there, like main. There's no de main development of it at all. And so um, I, I guess it's a bit of my fork. Um, yeah. So I think this should build make kernel. So that builds. So that's that's a cleanup commit um, after our 20 second break for stretching. Okay, um, yeah, so this is like totally a, a side cleanup. It is not related to the main work I'm doing of cleaning up the header files. Uh, clean up, um, declare kbd get c as static. Yeah, it's not used outs outside the see it's not it's not public okay stretch thank you for stretching with me lizard yeah yeah very cool i'm trying myself on some microcontrollers maybe i can take something away cool yeah nice, nice um i mean if you're writing c that's what we're doing here and so you might learn a thing or two about c um i'm not like a c expert but I have a decent amount of experience with C, um, mostly C++. Eventually, I'm going to port this whole thing to C++, but uh, for now, um, that's a bit too much work, and so I'm just uh, doing C. Anyway, so actually, it turns out 
Interestingly enough, the only public um, interface uh, is kbd interrupt, uh, the function. It's like this. That's the only actual public interface, which is like kind of funny. Um, and the rest of this stuff is private. Oh, kbd.c. I need to close a few things. How do I? Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of like failing at, right now at, at, at using VS Code. I don't know how to like get a list of all my tabs and just like close them easily. Um, pipe main. Okay. So my dilemma right now is I have all this, these private constants that are in the header file, but they don't need, they shouldn't be here, I think. I think all of this can be completely um, in the in the C file, actually. Let me let me try that. I'm just gonna take all of this and move it to the top here. And now this file is totally empty. I didn't change the def.h yet. Does it build? It builds. Make clean? Does it did it really build? Make kernel. Yeah, yeah, I, I pretty I'm pretty sure that's legit. I think there's no reason to expose all these defines to everybody else. Um, which I can even delete this, I think. That means all I need is this kbd. And now that means all the clients, such as the trap, whatever, now need a k kbd.h. Um, yep, a kernel builds. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. I'm pretty happy. I think that's legit. It feels good to like make things um like not exposed if you can help it. Like you know, like actually have good kind of rigor around what is um like public, what's private, stuff like that. Um so I'm just going to add an extra like new line here for two new lines between the data and this function. But let's uh, let's just see if we're still running. We are. That's cool. Nice. That was, that was, that was okay. Pretty straightforward. Now we need to go and save defs.h. So defs.h, we remove this. We add... Uh huh. But wait a second. So maybe maybe it's pr maybe doing this in two steps. So step one. Yeah, I think so. It might be cleaner. Hmm. What what should I do? So technically, this is a refactor. Like technically, um, this movement of code from here. I think just this whole hunk. Maybe yeah. Technically, this this code movement is a pure refactor. Um, it, it it's independent of this header file stuff we're doing. This could have happened like anyway, um, and so I I am going to make it a separate commit, a uh, separate cleanup commit. Um, do I do this in my day job as well? Not really. Um, I work on musical instruments in my day job using C++, but it's not OS development. Um, but it, it is C++ development. Um, but it's, it's not really anything like this. It's, it's pretty different. Um, this, this is way more low level. Um, although the software engineering stuff that I'm doing right now is, is exactly what I do during my, my day job. Like, like, um, 
making the Git history like perfect and stuff and thinking about like headers and dependencies and cleaning up the headers and making things good from a software engineering perspective. I definitely think about that a lot, but the actual like topic and subject do domain of like drivers and stuff. I don't, uh, I don't really deal with too much. Um, yeah, like, like synthesizers, like synth like synthesizer hardware, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, so I think this is legit. I'm going to quickly just do my stash unstaged just to really make sure. So let's then make kernel. It still works. So I think we're safe to um, make this a cleanup commit. Cleanup. Move private constants or move private um, constants into kbd.c. I'm pretty sure that's, I'm like not 100% sure that this, like this, that this won't bite me later, but I'm pretty sure that's totally fine just to move these constants there. So, that, and that makes, um, and now we can pop the stash. And then that means this commit is going to be super readable and, and nice. It's like all, all, all you do is just like these three things. You just move, remove it here, add it here, and adjust the single client that needs it. So that's pretty cool. Um, create um, what is it? KBD.h. I'm probably going to retouch these commit messages later to make them more consistent. But um, for the moment, I'm just kind of working fast. So moving right along L L A pick. Or, or maybe let's go with even shorter ones just to like, wow, there's so, there's, yeah, there's actually a lot of stuff here. I might not be able to finish this all in the next um, hour, which is unfortunate, but I'm going to, yeah, let's, let's move fast. So moving on, mp.c, extern is mp, interesting. Let's, um, let's do it. So duplicate mp dot Oh, it already exists. So that, that's what kind of makes this complicated. Yeah, some, some of these things already exist. So why? So MP already exists. And something about multiprocessor support, which I, which I truly know nothing about. Um, and we have this MP init function, which is used by who? Hello? It's used by main.c. Um, you'd, you'd probably clap your hands over your head if you saw my git add dot commit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. Like git, uh, git can be annoying to like deal with. Um, but once you have the right tools, I find that it's much easier easier to um to work with git like 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 for me i don't use the command line git really i i only use like the gui tools like like this one and also lazy git i don't i don't use the command line and i find that that's way just like way better to be productive with git for me um so mp in it is only used by main.c which is interesting so now I want to check, so what's the deal with these types? Are they private or not? MP, uh, so struct MP, for example, I mean, it definitely does seem private. All of these structs seem totally private to MP.C because struct M searching for struct MP doesn't find anything outside the existing things. So I um, kind of want to do the same thing I did, where I move them all into the C file, which I'm pretty sure is legit. Um, okay, what about, uh, so all, yeah, all these things like struct MP conf also only used here struct mp proc also only used here mp io apic only used here 
what about these things only used there? Yeah. So this is again, a case of like, for whatever reason, the original authors decided to put all this private data inside the header file, which I think is just not necessary. Um, I'm going to, I don't know what this thing, these things are weird. I'm just going to clean, like that's, that's a cleanup. Um, Clean up, remove page break. Good. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt this. I think. All right. Also, mp.c. We already have types.h, so I can get rid of it um, here. I think, and then just take all of this, and I'm gonna put it like right here in the C file. Pretty sure that's legit. Um, got some got some constants. Got uh, start CPUs. This has nothing in it now. Let's see. Does this compile? I'm pretty sure it compiles. Yeah, it compiles. Cur kernel memfs. Does it run? It runs. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We are good. So, so that's our cleanup first off. Cleanup is just move this thing into here. Okay. Oops. Um, cleanup. Move private data into mp.c. Okay. Next. Next, this is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna I'm going to do this. Oops, I kind of messed that up. What what happened? Okay. I'm I'm going to do. Why 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 did that happen again? Move to the next pane. Okay, good. Okay, so now this is the simple port I could try. Next obvious thing is to clean up the collars which is main.c and it's mp.h. And then what's up with this is mp thing? It's like this big global variable. <laughs> um, it's just like this big global state of like whether we're running on a multiprocessor system or something like that. And <laughs> yeah, it's like this big mutable global global variable. And apparently people need to know about it. Or like, why is it an extern int? That's the suspicious thing. I don't think it's needed. Which actually means that could have been like a cleanup even earlier if I figured that out earlier, but I kind of don't feel like um, cleaning up the history or something. Um, wouldn't uh, was it? Wouldn't that kind of thing be better off as a conditional code insert with like a hash with like a pound if? Um, I'm not sure I understand it well enough to really say. Um, maybe like if you mean like compile out all like you know at compile time compile either in or out the support for multiprocessor systems for example um, rather than like having it kind of like lingering in there but uh, yeah I mean there's advantages to both sides so if you do the if def root then you end up with like two builds. You have like a one build that's only for single processor, one build that were, is for multiprocessor. Um, and that's the, 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 the pro, like the good thing about that is that you like optimize your build and it's like smaller and has less things in it. But the, the downside is that you have more complexity because users need to know which one to, to um, the download and stuff based on their system and the advantage of having it just kind of all in one with this kind of like dynamic 
kind of thing is that you just have a single binary, a single build, and it can work on anything at the expense of like the build is like a little bit bigger than maybe it needs to be if you are only on um, a single processor system. But that goes back to the, the initial question of why is this extern and why is this extern int? I I don't see any other people referencing is MP. So I have the feeling that it will build if I if I don't if we don't have that. But I'm not gonna remove that right now because that would be confusing in the diff. Um, so uh yeah so what what's going on so like that so it's the normal pattern remove this add this here and add the include and then i'll do a cleanup later um or um uh, uh, make create or what was it move um mp prototype move mp um prototype Whoa, prototype to mp.h. And then lastly, I think we can just delete this. This is totally unnecessary, I think. Right? Do we um, we run? We totally run, yeah. So that's just, yeah, it's just literally unnecessary code, I think. <laughs> um, clean up. Remove unnecessary ex there are no external clients of this outside outside mp dot, dot c um cool pick irq another nice small pick irq dot h pick or oops um is there a pick irq.c? There is, good. Yeah, so in this file, for example, it's it's doing that thing where it, it only defines things in the C file if they're only ever used here. So that's so that's good. Um, okay, so we have just these two things. And, oh, wait, what the hell? Okay, yeah. So this is, this is now like this. Um, this all moves into here. I think this would be pretty easy. Yeah. No special, nothing else needed. And then we just need to figure out who is using it. My search thing is like not uh, not working. Okay. Oh, interesting. This is pick enable and this is IOA pick enable and it's like getting confused. Also, what? There's also, what? It seems like there's no clients of pick enable or pick in it. Hello. There's L A pick in it. Okay, there's a main dot C uses pick in it, but but what pick enable? Nobody is using pick enable. It's like dead code. Hmm. So maybe I'll be smart this time and actually clean that up before I do everything. Um, I am going to delete that hunk. So is it true that pick enable is never used? I also don't even know what this is. What is a uh, pick rq.c? Also, what the? There's no <laughs> pick enable is not even a thing in this entire code base. That's funny. <laughs> pick enable is not even a thing. This is like totally just like wrong. Okay. Right. Like compile. Okay, good. Uh clean up. Alright, stretch break for twenty seconds.
Okay. Um, clean up. Room unused. Pick enable. Like, it's not even unused. Yeah, whatever. Okay, now we, now we can actually kind of do this. Um, so now it's so it seems like the the actual only function is pick in it. Um, and uh, yeah, we don't we don't need that here. Now it, now it's here, and it's, this is going to be easy. It's just uh, find why VS Code is like not uh, reload VS Code right reload window. Why is my searching not working? Okay, it's here. So now main dot. Now we're going to need a pick irq dot h. Okay, check the diff. Remove that. Um, add this, right? Yep. And yep. And technically, the last thing we technically um, make this the first include. Okay. So yep, add this, add this, this, okay. Uh, create pick irq.h. Uh, hmm, hmm. Moving on. Okay, what's switch dot s. I'm just doing all the small stuff. Wow, there's so much stuff here. Yeah. Timer vm. A random num element helper thing. Okay. Um, Switch.s. Let's let's check this out. It's kind of uh, interesting. Switch.s. Um, mm, mm, mm. So switch. Proc. That's it. Proc is the only one that uses switch.s. Switch.s is implemented, er, okay. So a switch.s. I'm actually, I mean, I'm not actually super familiar with this part because I don't use assembly in my, in my like work day to day. So um, I, I'm kind of wondering what to do. Do I just do the normal thing where I make a header file? Probably. Yeah, probably duplicate switch dot h, I guess. And uh, it's, it's just going to have uh, this in it. OK, don't need this pick thing anymore. OK. Um, Switch.s, probably no, I don't even know if including works in .s files, although, although I think it does. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick search, ag include, ag s. Yeah, apparently you can just, uh, yeah, why not? I don't know, I've never done that before. Include switch.h, that seems, seems reasonable. Um, and then, and then we go and find all our callers, which is proc.c. And then we make it rely on switch.h. Okay, should we should build? No such instruction. Oh, so now, yeah, that's that's like the thing I was hope I was kind of wondering about. Um, Isn't it weird to uh, include? Oh, you, you need the um, 
you need like something around it, like a if def or something, right? No? Entry.s. What's asm dot what is it? Asm dot h. So maybe mm, maybe very limited things are available. What's mem layout? Like maybe only defines are are, are like eligible u dot h. If not defined assembler. Oh, but then this whole struct thing is there. But maybe it's like only structs. What does this mean? <laughs> Looking at SM makes me wonder if I really know anything about computers. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. Um, in my experience, though, you just need to kind of go slowly with it and you can often sort of kind of figure things out but um but yeah okay i am not i'm just gonna not do this there's no no reason to do that oops uh make kernel yeah so what's going on so we got our new switch.h we need our defs dot so this and then this and then this easy make kernel still works does it still run the whole thing? Okay, good. Um, create switch.h. Okay, nice. Um, what's next? What's the next smallest thing? Timer. Timer. Duplicate timer.h. Okay. So timer init is the only thing here. And I'm hoping that this is going to be very easy if my searching would work. Uh, okay. Seems like nobody's using timers anywhere. What's the deal? Why Why is this even here? Timer init. Okay, even easier than I thought. It's dead code. Uh, it's, a, it's a cleanup. Uh, delete. Right? We can, this, this builds. Yeah. Dead code. Clean up. Um, remove unused timer init. Prototype. Is, is timer? Yeah, timer init is not even a thing. Timer.c is not even a thing. None of, none of this is real. <laughs> remove unused timer good prototype i wonder yeah i wonder what, what what happened there why yeah who knows um i could probably blame it or something and figure out but um that was easy trap uart let's do um let's do uart yeah uart seems kind of fun um so what's a nice easy header file for me to copy? kbd.h duplicate uart.h, I guess. So now let's, uh, this also seems pretty straightforward. And who is using uart in it? Probably main, I'm, I'm gonna guess. Yep. So. You are interrupt trap dot C. Hello, you are it, right? That's uh, you are put C console. Yep, okay. Uh huh, rebuild. Good. All right. I, I never say. I've always tried to save the dev stuff h file. All right. Remove this. Um, <clears throat> add this. Uh huh. Um, 
but I forgot something. UART.C should now start with this. Yes, I know that word. Which word? <laughs> what, did, what did I just say? I, I forget. Um, okay, so this thing comes, and then we cl clean up the clients as usual. Okay. Um, UART, okay. Create UART.h. Yeah, I, I kind of know what UARTs are. Yeah, I've never written a UART driver before, so I'm kind of curious to... Um, learn about that but but yeah but yeah you are very very useful uh, and very simple too and they've, they're very old too i think because they're, they're just so simple and they work so well like the like, the two like two wire you are or, or whatever it is i think um okay now now these are all kind of bigger proc.c is like quite big wow okay um, about, about 30 minutes left, so reading about I, I2C, I squared C. Nice, implemented in Verilog. Very cool, very cool. Like a, like a, like implementing like an I squared C controller in, in Verilog, I suppose. Um, like flip, flipping the wire, like flipping the, the wires or up and down or whatever <laughs> based off of uh, the protocol log dot c um duplicate log dot h so now this is interesting because that was the last usage of struct buff in this whole file which means we can actually remove the struct buff and now we just need to figure out what's who is using this so init log probably Main or the file system is my guess. Okay, I'm wrong. Proc dot C. Um, uh, was it log dot H? Log write. Uh, FS dot C. I'm actually kind of yeah. I, I I'm kind of curious about this because. I kind of thought that the log is part of the FS. Simple logging that allows concurrent FS system calls. A log transaction contains the updates of multiple FS system calls. The logging system only commits when there are no. Okay. I don't like, I don't totally get it, but it's definitely related to the file system log rate log h okay begin op okay then this is kind of like a widely used api okay so uh log h oops log h File.c, log.c, I didn't do the thing yet, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, log.h, proc.c, I already did that. Sysfile.c, I don't think I did that yet. Log.h, and then hopefully end up requires no work because every every person or every every file that was already doing begin op already does or that does end op already do, did begin op and I already added it when I did the begin op ones I think that's the case right this is there and sys what's that with sys file this file does all okay that makes sense sys file is all the file system sys calls so that's why it's it's doing this. So, so that's cool. Um, mm -mm. Struct buff. We need that forward declaration, and this should compile. Cross your fingers. 
it compiles. Does it run? And it runs. Harmless. Nice. Okay. Defs.h. Um, Defs.h. Uh, Log.h. Log.c. Then all of the clients. Sec. File. Fs. Seems good. Okay. <clears throat> Create log.h. Oops, I didn't. I want to. I want to keep that around so I can copy it for the next one. Okay. What's next? What's the next smallest, simplest um, trap? Maybe Exter All these extern stuff is like, oh. But maybe it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Let's do trap. Whatever. Trap dot duplicate. Trap dot h. And we'll move this here. And we need to include types dot h. Um, okay, now save and let's take a look who's main dot c. Surprise, surprise. Oh, mm, trap dot h. That's it, okay. TV in it, trap vectors, also in main. So we, we already took care of that. Um, ticks lock, interesting. Sysproc, sysproc is the user of ticks lock. While, but wait, while I'm at it, trap.c, Trap.h. Okay. Um, and so sysproc is the main other user of all this. And then what's this ticks thing? Very hard to grep for this because it's such a like a generic word. Okay, it seems to be only used by sysproc, which already has our thing. So I think that was it. Um, make kernel, make chemo, easy, quick code review, defs, delete that, uh, add this, but wait a sec, is there anything, okay, this is void, void, so no, um, no forward declarations, we might be able to delete, let's add this, and then clean up the clients, good. Create, um, what's it, trap.h. <clears throat> okay. Um, pipe, let's do, let's do pipe. Um, okay, duplicate, pipe.h, delete all this. Now this actually uses quite a few types and stuff, so. Um, also what? Where is struct pipe? Like, also what? We're in, we're making pipe.h and we need a struct pipe. Where, who, who has, oh, it was a for, but still, it was a forward declaration here. But who, pipe.c? You gotta be kidding, what the? Interesting. So apparently, apparently it's totally fine for struct pipe to be a private type. And then because literally like nobody else references it by anything else than a pointer, apparently. So it can be private. That's kind of cool, actually. It's like, if, if you include this header, you don't actually get to know what a pipe looks like on the inside. All you get are these things. Um, we need our forward declaration. So any other uses of struct pipe? Nope. All right, we can remove this. Um, so we got the pipe. Struct file. 20 second break. Be right back.
Okay, so struct pipe, we also need struct file. Oops, file. Um, okay. Pipe and save this. Then time to figure out who is using these functions. It's this file. This file is allocating pipes, pipe close, file.c. File.c, okay. Now let's see. So that's, that's pretty easy then. Um, Pipe.c, we already, okay, no. Pipe.h at the top. Uh-huh. Does it build? Yep, it builds. Go to view. So, what about a struct file? Yeah, also no users, so we can also remove that too. So now this is good. So that's starting to hollow out that file. Um, Defs and pipe.h. Then pipe.c gets this. Then our two clients are updated. Create pipe.h. Okay. Um, Sleep lock is the next smallest one. Let's do sleep lock. What is a sleep lock? It's like a non. It's like a non-spin lock or something. It's like an actually sleeping lock, probably. Um, duplicate sleep lock. It already exists. Interesting. Okay. Why do you already exist? Because of this thing where. Oh, that's funny. Sleep lock includes a spin lock. Interesting. Okay. Um, pipe to H, sleep lock. Um, so, first question. Does anybody actually need to know what a sleep lock is? Apparently, yes. Apparently, buff dot H. That would, that would make sense. Like, people need to use sleep locks. Like, people need to, like, that's a, that seems like a public type. So, make that makes sense. Um, spin lock h. Okay, that that checks out. And it seems to me like yeah, we should just be able to put this in here. Right. Um, what kind of stuff? So sleep lock, not used anywhere else in that file. So. And now we just need to figure out who is calling this. Um, bio. Let's see. Sleep lock. H. Fs. C. Sleep lock. H. Release sleep. Bio. Fs. Okay. Um, also, sleepblock.c probably. Oh, it already has it. Did it already have it the whole time? Maybe. Um, so that would just be, yeah, it already did. So that's just clean up. Sleepblock.h include. Okay. So this thing, I already had it. Release sleep. Bio and FS holding sleep, probably the same. Bio, FS, IDE, and mem IDE. Interesting. Sleep lock, mem IDE. Oops. 
But no, what the? Uh, sleep block. I should really, I should really save that to a register, but I just was kind of lazy. Doesn't buy it. I think this works. Um, so build, it's so run. Yep, okay, good. And was that it? So we just remove this, add this here. And didn't I like update a bunch of clients just? Did I not update a bunch of clients? Wait, what the? All right, I'm like kind of confused. Did I, wait, I thought I just uh, changed a bunch of stuff <laughs> in other files. Like bio.c, right? Am I am I hallucinating? Hmm. Weird. What? Did I did I put too much here? No. Super like that H does that's it. Wait, what? I'm I'm confused. Did I, like yeah all this stuff it already all this stuff already had it so all right I don't know that was maybe yeah <laughs> what okay whatever um sleep locked out a lot of stuff already had it um hmm. yeah like what the. Right, this. Oh, did it already have it? I didn't notice it, maybe. And nothing changed in the file, maybe. Is that is that true? If I... Yeah, okay, I see. I, I was not looking, and all these things already had it, and I just added it for no reason, and Clang Format removed it, and nothing changed in the diff. Okay, that was confusing. Okay. Um, create sleep lock dot h good okay a couple minutes left l a pick spin lock well, let's do l a pick yeah why not um duplicate lapic.h So that's a, this might be an interesting one. This needs RTC date, which is kind of unusual. It needs um, types.h. I think that should make these fuzzy things go away. Okay. Um, okay, so now now I'll go to lapic.c. The local apic manages internal non IO interrupts. Internal non IO interrupts. I don't. I don't actually. Uh, don't actually know what that is. See it, chapter 8. Okay. Anyway, so. Interesting. So this seems to be unused, like what? <laughs> oh, not again. Yeah, that's what I should yeah, that's what I should be doing from the start. Checking if these things are un if these things are used or not. CMOS time seems totally unused. Uh, that should be deleted. What about this thing definitely seems used, right? Also this thing. L A pick whatever yeah um, that's definitely used okay this is trap that's used L A pick init that's used L A pick startup A P that's used micro delay that's probably used but only uh, oh yeah but in the U R too okay so let me just um, um, 
I guess technically I can just stage this that single line right seamless time is the only it's like that's it's like totally not a thing oh but it it is a thing but um there's no callers of CMOS time it's dead code I believe yeah so cool let's let's delete this uh, Wow, did that work? My, ma my my macro worked. Okay, I have this like Vim macro that uh, lets you easily just like block select whole like functions and like if statements and stuff like that. Um, okay, CMOS time, right? So now, the, now there's like no one talking about this thing. Uh, actually, it's like, yeah, so this is what we're talking about. So stage this. So you remove that declaration we remove, and this thing should just, uh, uh, this thing should just not have it at all, right? Oh no, okay, I don't know, Turn the old contents. Yeah, whatever, this thing doesn't exist. So, first off, we remove that line, then we just, then we remove this thing. And that is a cleanup. All right, clean up. Um, move from unused CMOS time. Good. Next, um, devs.h. Yeah, so now we're like actually doing this port thing that we're doing. So now this goes here and this goes there. That goes there. And now, now time to clean up all the clients. So. Console.c and proc.c. I'm going to, what's it, la pick. I'm going to save that into a register, okay. And then proc.c, paste. Right, okay. Moving on to this weird la pick variable, which is going to be kind of hard to grep for. It's used here. But it's used internally, which kind of doesn't count. Any external. Yes. MP.c needs to know about this thing. And they are the only one. But interesting, yeah, something about um like this MP, whatever. They're like doing oops. They like figure out a bunch of initial stuff and then just like set a bunch of variables that I guess are kind of just read and used from that point on. Um, hmm. So that's the variable. What about all this stuff? That's this is the trap thing, right? Uh, this is what this is main. Laypick init. Uh, I think startup AP it's also main, so nothing to do. Micro delay, it was main. No. It was just internal, but also like UART for some reason. So. Oh, what did I do? I broke this. Right, okay. Does it build? Does it run? No. What did I, What happened? Fill. What? Fill RTC date. Oh, okay, interesting. This was um this must have been only used by this by CMOS time. No? Or what? Yes, right here. <clears throat> Interesting that I got an error. Defined but not used. That's pretty cool. Interesting that I didn't get an error for um, the actual C that actual CMOS time function or whatever. Um, okay, now I'm going to unstage this, and I'm just going to stage this and um, amend it back into this. 
So now that commit removes both this unused function, but also this like one that was only used because of this unused function. And now we remove this thing. We, what is it, where is it? Uh, we add, but, all, but also we don't need this anymore actually. Yeah, that's cool. No, why does that not work? Okay. There's no need for this RTC date anymore. No one's using that. That's kind of nice. Um, this is our standard thing we do. Uh, and then we have all these like random clients, right? Okay. Great. Create laypick.h, right? Okay, we're coming up on the end of time here. So is there anything I can do real quick at the last minute? Sys call, spin walk, or should I just wait for next time? Um, yeah, I'm gonna wait for next time. I'm gonna wait for next time. Um, yeah, I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks all for joining. This was a pretty good one. I feel like this is the most code I've ever written in a stream because it was just so easy and so simple and such a mechanical refactor. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for joining and I will see you next week. Peace.